help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description. What is the moral of it? Sometimes Allah stretches and prolongs your desperation and your need because He wants you to continue crying to Him. Call it. He loved you that way. It changed you. It made you a better person. Six years was enough. We became people who are regular with Salah. We changed our lives. We cut our sins. We, we spent more time with our families. Subhanallah. When Allah gives you the feeling within your heart that you need to spend time with your family, it's a sign that you have the best of this world. One of the signs. And when Allah Almighty has not accepted you, Shaitan gets hold of you and makes you feel that you need to spend time with haram, with that which is displeasing to Allah, then you're losing the best of this world. You can never achieve the best of this world through haram. That contentment, you lose it. So this brother got a job after so many years and he says, I'm so thankful to Allah because one thing led to another, to a third, to a fourth. Now I'm my own boss. I don't even have a time that I need to get to a workplace at a certain time from this time to that time. And I'm so thankful to Allah. And guess what? The ball is rolling. I told him, what exactly do you do? He said, I'm not selling my secrets. <laughs> said, wise man, for as long as halal, I don't care. I don't need to know. It's not wise to tell everyone what you do because a lot of time, the times shaitan will come and make them do what you're doing better than you, subhanallah. <laughs> and who told them? But you can share with them the profit of what you're making, isn't it? <laughs> tell them, listen, I won't tell you what I'm doing, but I give you 10 grand every month. <laughs> that's a sharp guy. I tell you, that's an intelligent man. <laughs> if only but you know. Someone might come to me outside there and say, where's the 10 grand? Let's see. <laughs> Don't despair. The challenges that you face on earth are temporary, my brothers and sisters. Wallahi, they are temporary. How many of us have been through days we believe we're not going to make it out, either because of a financial struggle, family matter, a health matter, whatever else it may be. Today we're standing and we're happy and we're okay. Who brought you out of that? Is the Lord of the worlds who brought you out of your initial issues, not able to take you out of other issues that you're going to face on earth? And do you really think that if you came out of one issue, Allah is not going to test you with another? It has to come. It's coming. Get ready for it. Subhanallah. Prepare for a rainy day. Connect with Allah. Be happy. One of the major problems that we have is we refuse to adjust to a new level that Allah might have kept us on that may not be as high materially as we were in the past. So because we're too proud to adjust, we suffer the consequences and we can't face the people. And we can't accept that I'm no longer as wealthy as I was. One of the gifts of Allah is to be able to adjust. You can't afford school fees at the top schools. Well, you know what? I can adjust. I might even consider homeschooling. Who knows? Maybe Allah wants you to take your kids out of that school for a reason. You might realize it later. So remember to thank Allah for what you have because the Quran clearly says that la in shakartum la azidannakum. I'm sure we all know this verse. If you are to thank Allah, Allah says, if you are thankful, I will grant you increase. That's what Allah says. If you are thankful, I will give you increase. If I want increase, what do I have to do? Wallahi, you have to thank Allah. That's the way to grant you increase. You have to thank Allah. And Allah will bless you with more and more and more. And how do you thank Allah? Again, you start off with your salah. You start off with your prayer. You start off with worshipping Allah alone. You try and ensure that all my ibadah is focused and dedicated to my maker. And at the same time, I'm following the sunnah to the best of my ability. The best of my ability. And then I'm kind to everyone. I fulfill their rights. I go out of my way to help people. I forgive a lot of those who've wronged me if you can't forgive all of them. A guy came to me a few weeks ago, says, I'm going for Hajj. I said, hey, mashallah, Mubarak, congrats, man. May Allah make Hajj easy for all those who, who are there and those who are going. And may Allah take us all again. And those who haven't been, may Allah take us there. I said, yes, so much. He said, no, I have a problem. What's the problem? He says, you know, I went asking forgiveness and I went to ask forgiveness from this guy that really I have wronged him in quite a big way in the past. He told me, I'm not forgiving you, but I'm going for Hajj. He said, I'm not forgiving you, but I'm going for the pillar of Islam. Hajj. 
He said, so what? I'm not forgiving you. He said, now, can't you talk to him? I said, well, we can try talking to him, but he's well within his rights to say that I'm not forgiving you. Do you get my point? Why did you wrong him in the first place? This was a hard nut to crack, subhanallah. He said, if you only knew what this guy did, I'm leaving it for the day of judgment. That's why Allah Almighty says, be careful. When you've committed a sin between yourself and Allah, it's easily forgiven. When you've committed a sin against a fellow human being, it's a bit tougher because fellow human beings are not ghafoor and rahim. They're not most forgiving, most merciful. No, they are human beings. They look at you like this. Subhanallah, you will fix you. <laughs> and you look at him and you say, you're so small. Come fix me now. He says, no, not now. We're waiting for the day of judgment. Oh, that's a heavy one. So I had to speak to this brother and I told him, my brother, I want to just tell you one thing, a point of consideration. Say you arrive on the day of judgment and this guy comes along and say, oh Allah, I, I, I want justice. What if something happened somehow and the tables happen to turn and the evidence is against you and on that particular day you find out that you were actually guilty of something and you had to actually pay him and now it's the other way around. Is it possible? Initially he said, no, it's not possible. He did wrong to me. I said, but... Haven't you spoken about him and done this and done that and so I said, yeah, I spent half a life against this guy. I said, there you are. The best thing to do is don't leave it for the day of judgment. Just release it. Three days later, he came to me and said, I've released it. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. He said, I thought about what you said. It's not worth holding it. It's worldly. Release it. The other day I was telling some of the brothers, I said, you know what? If someone's caused, if someone's caused harm to me, I really don't care. And I wouldn't waste my time praying against them because I need my prayers. You know, I, I'm going to pray for good things, nice things that I want. I can't waste my time. Oh, Allah, destroy this man and that man. I can't do that. Say, you know, leave it. When it gets to 10 million US dollars, I'll think about it. <laughs> but nine and a half million, it's still a bit cheap. Why should I raise my hands? Come on. I'm going to raise my hands and you haven't even caused destruction of nine and a half million to me. So leave it, man. Why do I rather say, oh, Allah, give me Jannah, forgive me. Grant me the companionship of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa I mean, come on, those are du'as now. Come on, now you're talking business, man. Subhanallah, I'm going to talk about you. I'd rather say, oh Allah, let this man be my neighbor there. And let's not have ghil and any form of ill feeling in our hearts. And we're all going to be together there. Subhanallah, we'll be enjoying. I tell Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, when in du'a, and oh Allah, even if you give me a small, the smallest spot in Jannah, Wallahi, I'll be happy. The small, we all, shouldn't we all want at least a little spot? If I got my small corner right at the entrance, Wallahi, I'm a happy man. I'm a happy man. May Allah grant it to us through His mercy. No matter how many deeds we do. Do you know why we do deeds? Let me explain why we do deeds. Because people hear always and correctly that you can never enter Jannah through your deeds. You can only enter Jannah and paradise through the mercy of Allah. Have you ever heard that? It's a fact. It's in the hadith. So then why do we do deeds? Isn't it? You know, young people today are too sharp. Say, I, I don't do salah, I don't do anything because I heard that we enter Jannah through the mercy of Allah, not through our deeds. Why should I waste my time doing deeds? Hang on, hang on, hang on. You enter Jannah through the mercy of Allah. How do you invoke the mercy of Allah? Through your deeds. Did you hear that? How do you get the mercy of Allah? Well, you do deeds. So I can't enter paradise through my deeds, but I can get the mercy of Allah through my deeds. And then I'll enter paradise through the mercy of Allah. Do you know why? Today we all did our salah, right? Let me tell you what happened today. So the imam came up and we were all squeezing. Some were outside, some couldn't make it. Right now people are standing here. They, the sisters, one wonders where they are. I think we're in Panorama and they might be in Cape Town. <laughs> But in actual, in, in actual fact, we are human. So as you're standing, one guy is pushing you this way, that way, you're looking at the spot for sujood. Wallahi, when I was in sujood earlier as an imam, I got up slightly quicker because I thought to myself, there may be people struggling to make sujood because of how narrow the space was. I'm telling you a fact. And so, in reality, when we are standing, how's the concentration levels? How were they today? Tell me. You're standing and you're thinking, Surat al we're listening to this recitation. You know, I stopped at a certain place and I went and, and I continued. And I thought to myself, well, it would have been better meaning wise to not have actually continued there to go back a bit. But I said, no, it's okay. It's not a mistake. And all these things are going through my mind. But it's to do with Quran, right? It's okay. 
hey, the concentration was nowhere near 100% for any one of us. Some of the guys being pushed and this guy next to you is stamping on your toes and you say, come on, man. Where's the concentration? The fact that you did your salah will call on and invoke the mercy of Allah. When Allah has mercy upon you, He will accept the salah and give you paradise through His mercy. That's what it was. So did you try? I did. My beloved brothers and sisters, challenges are temporary. Don't worry or don't be depressed and sad because of some challenges in your life. Allah might test you again and again, but Allah will make you stronger after each and every test. And Allah will bring you solution from places you will not imagine. So don't leave Allah when you are in problem and where you are when you are in happiness, you are in a comfortable mode. Don't forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reach out to others and when you help others continuously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you. Don't wrong others. Never do injustice towards anyone. If you wrong others, then you need to ask forgiveness from them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive someone's personal wrong you have done. So you need to go and ask forgiveness from them and if they forgive, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive. So be very careful in wronging others. Most importantly, don't waste your time. Our time is limited. So do productive things, be productive and always keep learning new things. Educate yourself, learn new skills. This world is moving really fast and in this age of technology, it's really easy to get knowledge. If you search on internet, you'll get authentic knowledge. You just need to know how to differentiate the authentic ones and gain knowledge on a daily basis. This knowledge will make you stronger, will make you more wise and will give you honor and respect in your life. And always try to earn halal income, become self independent because if you rely on someone else they can take you as a hostage you need to always work for them and you will lose your independence so try to become an entrepreneur try to become independent and try to learn new skills which will help you to earn halal income and never miss your salah Pray your five daily salah on time. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you'll see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making things easy in your life. Help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org link in the description.